So we're ready to start our ne next session. Uh, it's clinical immunology and immunotherapy. So when I talk about lack of humility, I'm usually thinking of this group. So uh, they've made many contributions, but they have a long way to go. Uh, so uh, without any more taunts, we'll move on. Our first speaker is Marta Lucha. Marta comes to us from the Institute for Advanced Studies where uh, she and Ben did a lot of work together. Marta has been very interested in escape mechanisms, in particular focusing on how influenza as a virus mutates to avoid the immune system. And uh, her plan here is to study how tumors avoid the immune system uh, which I think is going to be a much more complicated phenomenon, but uh, we look forward to hearing about how, how we should be doing this. Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, very happy to be here. So I, as Stephen was saying, I just recently started here as an assistant professor. Uh, so just to introduce myself, uh, I am a computer scientist, uh, but I started working on problems from computational biology uh, in my PhD, and then uh, more recently I got interested in different, like various questions from the interface of um, evolutionary uh, biology and uh, computational uh, immunology. So, uh, like, more, like, in particular, I was interested in the, like, questions about predictability of evolution um, in fast evolving systems such as viruses and uh, more recently uh, cancer. So uh, I wanted to know if immune selection imposes sufficient constraints on the system uh, that the evolution is channeled and becomes uh, like more, uh, more predictable. So I would show two case studies um, here and like discuss, I will talk a bit about my previous work in influenza and also the recent work on cancer under immunotherapy and I will uh, like discuss the general similarities uh, between the two systems and, and the differences. So uh, the questions about predictions uh, in influenza are, are like can be as follows: uh, Which clade uh, will be the dominating one for the next season? So what should be the what vaccines should we choose? Uh, in cancer, we are interested if the patient's tumor will respond to therapy. So we want to know how it will behave under, behave under therapy. And here we want to know if all clones, if the therapy is supposed to be successful, we, we expect all clones in the tumor to be, uh, to be affected by the therapy. So, uh, so here, uh, just again, a comparison of these two System so uh, the influenza and cancer show uh, similar like modes of evolution. They have high mutation rates. Uh, so on the left you see influenza with strains that are sampled from uh, from the like, from the population from uh, from patients uh, uh, across the world. This is a phylogenetic tree. So leaves are different strains and uh, the clades are. Uh, are colored by the distinct uh, antigenic clades are, uh, are 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 shown in different colors, and similar thing we see in cancer. This is just a schematic picture. So mutations um, um, mutations uh, give rise to new clones that uh, that pro proliferate uh, in a, in a patient's tumor. Uh, so. Uh, both the systems evolve under strong uh, immune pressure. So influenza uh, virus, uh, influenza virus has to change to evade the immune, uh, uh, immune the immunity that is arises in the uh, in the human population uh, um, due to uh, due to infection with previous strains. Uh, while uh, cancer uh, in cancer cancer cells are also visible to the immune system, especially under immunotherapy, and this, the cancer cells that have non, many mutations are less, that are less self-like or even more, or more visible. So um, we can, uh, the immune interactions that are specific to these two uh, systems are, are different. In uh, influenza, we see 
we have interactions due to uh, antibodies and, and B cells that recognize uh, hemagglutinin protein that is on the surface of the, of the virus. In, uh, in, uh, in cancer, uh, the uh, immunity is to a large extent, it is stipulated that this is due to uh, nantigens, which are mutated peptides of cancerous uh, proteins that are presented on the surface of the, of the cells by uh, MHC mechanism, and then they are uh, recognized by, uh, by the available uh, T cells. So we want to, uh, in this uh, class of models that I'm going to show, we want to uh, we want to quantify the probability of these different immune interactions and then translate them into fitness cost that will allow us to say what are the uh, growth rates of different uh, viral clades or, or cancer clones so that we can predict, uh, predict what happens to the system. So, okay, so just like a brief uh, uh, picture on uh, introduction into, in the, into influenza, what can be done. So here we want to uh, we want to quantify uh, the interactions between uh, viral strains and uh, uh, and the host anti like and the antibodies that are present in the in the host due to previous infections. Uh, so we want to actually more precisely we want to uh, we want to quantify the affinity between uh, the binding affinity between the this, the this, this molecules and then to, to translate it in via biophysical model into probability of, of, of binding. And uh, I, I, can't, I will not go into, into details, of course, but it turns out that we can actually learn quite a lot about uh, the, the immune system of the host uh, just by uh, looking at the genetic data sequences of previously circulating strains. And then we get even better when we look on uh, various um, antigenic assays that give better insight into uh, cross-reactivity of, of, of viruses. And like we can use these approaches to uh, predict the future, how the influenza clades will, will change uh, the frequencies into the, the future. And, uh, and this, this approach like, just proved to be useful such that we now collaborate and uh, and uh, predict uh, reports for uh, WHO uh, vaccine consultation meetings uh, every year, uh, where we like can present various information, uh, various details uh, about our uh, projections. So, uh, just to uh, uh, now, like talk a bit more about cancer. So uh, uh, we can also try to do similar things where the general design of the like mathematical approach will be similar, but the the fitness model itself will be different than cancer specific. So um, as I was saying, this is a cancer cell and uh, that is presenting an antigen and that may be recognized by, by a T cell. So here we want to know so that there's two components that are required for recognition. And then there's again, the, again, the biophysical interaction that can be described in mathematical terms. So first it's the MHC presentation and there are specific biophysical properties that can be predicted from sequence of the peptide. Uh, and second, there are actually more, <laughs> more uh, even more like biophysical interactions behind, uh, behind T cell recognition because the T cell has, first has to bind the presented peptide, but there are also other interactions that, uh, that actually form the repertoire of available, uh, of available uh, T cell receptors. So uh, we can also like try to quantify it, uh, even like using only uh, cancer genetic data, and uh, that was uh, that was uh, our uh, recent uh, approach. We just we for we formulated a mathematical uh, mo fitness model that was that was uh, quantifying this to to effects. So uh, we can having this fitness effects, we can like project the. Uh, Fitness, like project how the tumor will decrease uh, in size uh, under therapy, and then we can use we can use these uh, projections to and validate them on patient data. So we we say that tumors that are predicted to decrease in size a lot or should be really should ha should be uh, it, th th this should be reflected by prolonged survival in patients, we could, which we could actually 
see in this uh, uh, free available uh, immunotherapy cohorts from uh, melanoma and lung. So uh, to summarize, so like, I, uh, like I've been working on this uh, different like, class of models that involve uh, the like, mechanistic representation of, of immune interactions and evolutionary uh, principles. And just to finish, so, uh, this, this, this models, the, the nice part about it is that they actually give insight not into diagnostic, but it, it can actually be understand, uh, extended into understanding the system and, uh, and give insight into new treatments and strategies. Okay, thank you. And these are my collaborators, and uh, Ben is uh, gonna just uh, uh, follow after me now. <laughs> thank you.